Hi there, this is Rebecca over 60 and babyboomster.com. That's my blog. And today I'm very excited to announce that I finally became a grandma. <laughs> I'm going to be 71 in about a month. And so it's a little on the older side to be a grandma, but I'm really grateful. My daughter had a bouncing baby boy on Halloween, so he's got a Halloween baby. He's going to be a little devil, I guess. Anyway, very excited about that. The other thing I wanted to talk about was just sort of the difference between giving birth when I gave birth in the late 80s and the way it is now, because it's so different. <laughs> I mean, people have been giving birth for, you know, for from time immemorial, but it's just so different now with all the high tech stuff that they have. And what happened was because of all the monitoring that they did on my daughter, the doctor decided that the baby needed to be taken out about a month early, which I thought was kind of strange. And I didn't really get a great explanation about that. I think my daughter was a little bit on the puffy side, so that might have had something to do with it. But luckily, he was absolutely fine. He's a little tiny peanut, just slightly under five pounds. So it's been sort of a, an experience because my daughter had never babysat before. I babysat from the time I was 12 years old because my mother had twins when I was 12 years old. So I was sort of like the automatic babysitter and got to know what to do. When I gave birth, I wanted it all to be natural because that was the sort of a big thing, at least in Los Angeles, to have a birth without drugs. <laughs> and I had two births that way and I made it through, I survived. But it was funny because when I was telling the nurse that, she looked at me like I was an absolute loony bin. Like, why would you want to do that? The reason I did it was because I had been told that an epidural could slow things down and then it could end up being a C-section. And I was so bound and determined not to have a C-section <laughs> that I just plowed through the whole thing. It wasn't that terrible, you know? I mean, but with her, because they had to induce her, they first gave her a pill to sort of like open up her cervix. And then that took almost all day. And then they put a balloon in her hoo-ha, which just like, you know, to open it up, I just, that sounded awful to me too. And then they put her on Pitocin. So she was in the hospital for several days, which I was kind of surprised, but finally I got there at the crack of dawn on Halloween. So I was there for the birth, which is really an amazing thing if you haven't ever experienced it. It's incredible. And by 2.30ish, I think, she had the baby popped out. You know, it's a lot easier when the baby's a lot smaller. Mine were both like six pounds something. So I know that it was, it was a lot easier than like a 10 pounder. And everything came out great. And he let out a little cry and went directly into the NICU just, you know, for monitoring, but they said he was doing great. And so now we've got him at her house and he's just like <laughs> such a tiny little guy. So, you know, it's been an, an experience, a learning experience. I also breastfed for 23 months for each kid. And for me, it was an easy experience, but because the baby is smaller, it's a little bit more difficult. So she's got this really newfangled pumping machine, which I didn't have. I had one of those manual pumps and <laughs> forget it, that didn't work. My kids were just completely breastfed. They didn't ever use a bottle, which was hard for, you know, say a grandma who might want to help out or anybody else. And also, we had a difference in our lifestyles because my daughter has a really great job and so she's on maternity leave and her husband has a great job. And so I've been tagged as the nanny <laughs> because I've always worked from home so I don't really have to worry about that stuff. So that's why I was home just sitting there with a baby, you know, just nursing for hours and hours. 
And so they're kind of more sticking to a schedule and, you know, they've got it all mapped out and everything. And they've just got all this great equipment that I, I wished I could have had. And then her husband, which I think is really wonderful, her husband is so helpful. I mean, he's right there, you know, he's the king of wrapping the baby up in a swaddle. And it's really funny because the baby is small. He looks just like a burrito <laughs> in, in his little swaddle. It's so cute. But he's doing great. And then she's been having a little bit of trouble breastfeeding. So I'm trying to help her with that too, given my expertise <laughs> on all that. And hopefully that'll work. But in the meantime, she's pumping. So he's getting breast milk and, and all that. And I think he has to have a little bit of extra formula because he needs to gain weight. And that was part of the reason the doctor decided she wanted to induce him because he was kind of on the smaller side, so she felt he would actually do better on the outside than on the inside. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Like, you know, when you really think of, and, and I'm not a doctor, so I can't really say and, you know, forget what I say about that. <laughs> but you think about like the Neanderthals, like how did they survive and their babies survive just in the middle of anywhere. I mean, it's a complicated process, you know, like you need to know when to push, you need to get that placenta out and you need to get it all out. And I, I just have no idea how that happened. One of my favorite shows, and if you get a chance, if you have Netflix, is called The Midwife. I really think that everybody should watch that because it, it takes place in the East End of London. And these midwives during the 50s and 60s worked through a convent. They would go on their bicycles into town and visit all these women in their homes. And most of them had these home births up until probably like the 60s. They didn't really start having hospital births. So they were giving birth in just all of these squalid situations and, you know, things happened like you know, the doctor gave somebody the, the middle light, or I can't even pronounce it, <laughs> the middle light, you know, and they had, you know, they came out deformed and stuff. And it's just freaking amazing the technology that we have today. Like when I was sitting there in, in the birthing room, there was this monitor and this monitor was tracking everything. Like you wouldn't believe it. I mean, it had the baby's heartbeat. It had the baby's movement. It had my daughter's movement it it just had everything like there were four or five different strips you know that you could look at and oh and the contractions too you could see every contraction and she oh, didn't always know when she was having a contraction because she had the epidural i on the other hand knew i was having contractions i felt every one of them in fact when she was about to be born i was like down on my knees by the time i got to the hospital but what happened was for, with me was i felt like i was having contractions i went to the hospital and they were telling me i wasn't having contractions and i'm going like yeah i am having contractions so they said, well, you know, you probably should go home. <laughs> so I drove all the way and the hospital really wasn't very close and drove all the way home, took a shower, my water broke, and then I had to rush back and she was like kicking and screaming to get out. So, you know, it would have helped probably to have one of those monitors to actually tell them that, yes, I'm having a contraction. <laughs> But anyway, I just think the whole process of birth is really exciting. I know when I was pregnant, I was really into this Bradley method rather than Lamaze because it was deep breathing and I just thought that was a lot more natural. So we were shown a lot of videos of women giving birth and, you know, some women like in Brazil or someplace like that, I mean, they just squat on the ground and the baby comes out and of course there are the people that were having their births in a bathtub and all that. I was glad that I didn't have a home birth because both of my babies decided to wrap their neck in a cord. <laughs> so they were a fine, but you know, the doctor had to do some finagling to get them out of there. And it was a little scary because each of them were taken to the NICU. 
Whereas if you had it at home, you don't know what's going to happen. And so I was glad I did that. And it was funny because when I gave birth to my son, my second child, my husband got a job filming something in Africa and he left during my ninth month. So here I am with a toddler who is two and a half and my husband is gone and my, luckily my mother came down from, she was living up in the mountains at the time and she came down and she was at my birth for him and I ended up having like a whole audience and my birthing coach was supposed to go on a cruise and he decided to come a little bit early, so I wasn't sure she was gonna arrive. So one of my friend's husbands, who had also had a natural birth, came and he helped out and he took a video <laughs> of my whole birth, like it's completely, you know, everything. You see everything. I, I only played it once. I made my husband watch it when he came home. So <laughs> It was like to torture him from leaving me. <laughs> I mean, he did have to work, but, you know, got to get some revenge there. And I didn't have any help either. I just was on my own. I was, you know, I tried to get a housekeeper. I had a housekeeper for a while. And then when I came back, my husband wanted to fire her because he was Polish and thought, you know, Polish women have babies in the field and they just drop the baby and go back to work. So anyway. He's no longer my husband anymore. <laughs> so anyway, I would just like to know your experiences. I think, you know, when you're older, you know, you worry about things like, am I going to be able to lift the baby and hold the baby for a long time? Because I'm not quite as strong as I was before. Or what if I fall down or you know, something like that? It's a little bit different than if you're a grandma when you're in your 40s or 50s than when you're in your 70s. But I am so excited about it and just wanted to let you know, and I will see you in my next video.